Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everybody. As you can see, I have returned both to the world of KSP and to that of video editing. More of my motivations in a moment. First, I'd like to give a brief shout out to my newest subscriber, the Exoplanets channel. So far, anytime I've gotten a new subscriber, I was privy to essentially nothing about the subscriber in question. And I was pleased to be getting some attention from someone with such a demonstrated interest in the physical sciences. Every sub helps and motivates me as I attempt to claw my way past four subscribers. So today I'll be talking about KSP Aviation and a bit during the flight about what I'm up to with Jackson Electrodynamics. Here I'm selecting a target for an atmospheric sampling mission. So after many iterations of vehicles that involve the use of landing gear, I took some advice from more experienced KSP players and started a rocket plane. The only tutorials I could find involved parts that were currently unavailable to me at my position in the technology tree, so there was quite a bit of trial and error. Along the way, I found that using a tail fin simply caused the vehicle I was working on to tip over. I could have scrapped the entire design, but I decided at the time that the flight, characteristic <coughs> flight characteristics were just good enough for the mission parameters. Also, by good enough, I mean comparable to the Space Shuttle Orbiter, a vehicle so difficult to fly that it was compared to the box that it came in. I did attempt to build a vehicle with landing gear at one point and simply taxi my way to the target area. However, all of my attempts at doing this were, well, the vehicle basically toppled over and exploded. Jeb, of course, was strangely thrilled. So we're coming over zone AH-14 beta, and our solid rocket motor will burn out momentarily. Our target is actually just off to the left of the runway below us, and the vehicle will begin to pitch over on its own as we reach Apogee. So for this particular contract, the pressure reading must be taken on the ground. I had originally planned to do a flyover before I realized that I had misread my instructions. The vehicle will reach a terminal velocity of about 200 meters per section as I keep the velocity centered on the target, which will be visible shortly on the nav ball. Timing is critical if you wish to deploy the chute in a manner that does not have you glide outside of the target zone, and I found that opening it at around 1500 meters is probably best. So while we're gliding, let's talk about Gauss's law. For a continuous charge distribution, it's basically a surface integral on one side equated to the multiple of a volume integral on the other. And despite rigorous preparation, I somehow neglected large portions of multivariable calculus prior to my announcement that I would be attempting to work through this beast of a textbook. And here comes the green target at the top of the nav ball. Oh, and before I forget, if you've been watching my channel and you're disgusted by my handling of such matters as Firestraw substitution, matrix algebra, or the error function, please, pretty please, let me know. When I started this channel, I counted on criticism, but what I didn't count on was silence from anyone in a position to properly evaluate my handling of the aforementioned topics. So far, the only feedback that I've been getting relates to non-mathematical matters, and I'm beginning to feel rather lonely. So, in the weeks to come, I will be taking a closer look at topics involving, for example, three-dimensional integrals. These are actually pretty straightforward once you set them up, but it has been a while for me, and the first problem in Jackson Electrodynamics Chapter 1 involves charge distribution on a cylindrical surface, so I need to bone up. I should also mention that I did something with Jackson that, while I've done it with other textbooks, it probably won't work this time. Basically, I read up on the section that I felt was necessary for the problem at hand and then went ahead and tried to solve the problem without actually finishing the chapter. And here comes our parachute. I still find myself forgetting how thin the atmosphere is on Kerbin, and thus how long it takes for the chute to deploy properly. Getting back to Jackson Electrodynamics, it appears now that I'm going to need to work through the entire chapter before I think about attacking a single problem. And, who knows, maybe I'll find five or six areas of physics and math that I need to review before I make it to chapter two. But I didn't start on this path because I thought it would be easy. 
I also wanted to mention that I've been taking a renewed interest in my study of written Mandarin Chinese and spending a lot more time working on memory palace techniques for both that and my knowledge of such things as vector identities. Moonwalking with Einstein by Josh Foyer is, by the way, an excellent read. Now, there was a time when I would have preferred a crib sheet and the ability to simply look things up over you know, the difficulties of memorizing stuff, but I'm now finding that physics and math are much easier if you just know your subject matter. And here we are, safely approaching the ground at zone AH-14 beta, about to complete a small though hard-won contract as these things go. I didn't include a construction portion to this video, in part because the vehicle is of such a basic design. I should say, however, that I added winglets on the back to properly offset the center of lift. So there you have it. Logging the data completes the contract, and I didn't even have to discard any expendable boosters. Who knows, maybe I'll have enough in the bank after this contract to purchase a real runway. But that can wait. Right now, I need to review how to set up integrals and cylindrical coordinates. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime, signing off.